<laughs> so when she came back, I said, you're kidding, Chantal. She said, there you go. It's ahead of Hungary and Poland. And now, of course, we know why. Is Ireland has had the greatest dip in GDP. It has the hi highest foreign debt to GDP ratio of any uh, European Union member. Um, it has the largest government deficit as a percentage of GDP. And lastly, the Irish government has been forced to buy the two largest mortgage books in the country from the major banks uh, to keep them uh, solvent. So that's why they voted yes <laughs> in the referendum the other day uh, on the Lisbon Treaty. It's because they now want to be part of the European Union so that they can get bailed out. <laughs> and, uh, and the last possible flag, we think, is um, widespread unrest in China. I mean, China's a you know, done pretty well, but there's a lot of unhappy people in China. I mean, 20 million migrants have actually been laid off in the cities and have had to return to the rural areas. So it's not a sort of as a happier place as it was a few years ago. And of course, it's not a democracy. And if you suddenly get a sort of collective uh, move against the current uh, government, um, that could turn China from an accelerator of the global economy into a break. So those flags are down, and that's why it's still a wild card probability of only 10% to fork lightning. Uh, so it's quite a tough picture uh, that, we're, that we're presenting uh, to, to people. And of course, what we're saying is, watch the flags. And if you disagree with our scenarios and our flags and probabilities, what we're trying to offer is a structure in which you can actually debate the future in a sensible fashion by not betting all your money on a single uh, projection. What about South Africa? Well, in the article we said South Africa has been in the Premier League scenario since 1994 when it became a proper democracy. What is the Premier League? It's the top 55 nations in the world that are annually ranked by the International Institute for Management Development in Switzerland and they produce the list every May and it's called the Global Competitiveness uh, Survey. And we've been between 35 and 40 uh, for most of the time since 1994, which is a slight discount on the size of our economy. We're the 32nd largest economy in the world. But in 2007, we dropped 13 places from 37th position to 50th position in one year. Huge demotion for a single nation. And four, nation, four reasons were given. Number one, violent crime driving talent out of this country. I mean, how can you stay in the Premier League if you're losing your talented players? Number two, HIV-AIDS shortening the lifespan of an average uh, South African. How can you stay in the Premier League if over half your team are sick? Number three, uh, our infrastructure showing signs of uh, disrepair. And this was pre the rolling blackouts of Eskom. And number four, uh, that some of our industries were looking distinctly uncompetitive compared to Eastern players, such as our textile business. And last year, we fell another three places. We fell to 53 out of 55. The only two nations below us were the Ukraine and Venezuela. <laughs> so as Chantal and I said, we're in the relegation zone. <laughs> <laughs> this year, we bounced back. In May, when the list was produced, uh, we were 48th out of 57. Uh, they've added two nations to the list. And the reason given was that our banking system had emerged relatively unscathed from all the toxic debt flying around the world. Indeed, we have now been voted in the top three best managed banking systems in the world, <laughs> along with Australia and Canada. No sort of government bailouts um, at all uh, required. Obviously, people in this country uh, can criticize banks because of their conservatism, but in a sense, it has been a good thing uh, during this current uh, crisis. So we're now just outside the relegation zone, and there are three scenarios. The first one is we stay in the Premier League, and we fight our way back into the mid-30s and maybe get one day get into the 20s. That's the good scenario. The second scenario we call second division. <laughs> it's where the reprieve is short, and we get relegated into a scenario we call the second division. It's where the bulk of the third world lies, poor but peaceful. <laughs> and yeah. You exist in the second division. You make money in the second division. There are lots of companies that make money in third world uh, economies. But for the government, for the ANC, it's an unmitigated disaster because firstly, you do not earn the tax revenue in the second division that you earn in the Premier League. And Pravin Gordon has already talked of a 60 billion rand hole in tax revenue caused by the recession. 
Uh, and the second thing is uh, that you don't have access to foreign capital like you do in the uh, Premier League. Uh, we raised $500 million a few weeks ago, no sweat at all. You don't do that if you're in the second division. And when Eskom needs 400 billion rand to finance the next generation of power stations, you need that access to foreign capital. So it's a tough scenario, the second division. If you add the flag of violence, we move into a scenario called failed state. It's where the world turns its back on you because they regard you as too violent uh, to do business with. Uh, Somalia is a failed state. It's ongoing feud between warlords has put everybody off uh, Somalia. We would put Iraq, Pakistan, and Afghanistan in the failed state category. I mean, what businessman wants to appear publicly on the internet with his captors? <laughs> you know? um, so um, we feel at the moment that South Africa um, is, is, is nowhere near a failed state. In fact, we give a, a zero probability to the failed state scenario because we had a model election. Uh, it was a non-event. Uh, nobody disputed the results. Uh, we were the model of democracy. And despite the isolated incidents of unrest that we've had as a result of uh, non-delivery of services in municipalities, and yes, a few weeks ago our, our soldiers stormed the union buildings, but they were dressed in civvies, <laughs> uh, we still give um, a zero probability to that scenario. It's a cautionary tale. So the choice is between the Premier League and the second division. And we have three flags which we think people can use to decide whether we're going up or whether we're going down. The first flag is inclusive leadership. I mean, at this point in time, going through the corrugated U, <laughs> you've got to be a united team. I mean, why is Manchester United called Manchester United? Because it is United. <laughs> That's why they win the league. <laughs> Chelsea won the league for two years in a row because they were united. And then Jose Mourinho <laughs> fell out with Roman Abramovitz, and that was it. <laughs> End of story. Um, you, have to, you have to be a united team. And so far, so good. We think Jacob Zuma has exhibited uh, very good qualities of inclusivity, both with his appointments in cabinet and his appointments outside cabinet. But equally, when he was asked about having another debate on race in this country, he said, for heaven's sake, we've got to move on and create a non-racial society in South Africa. And yeah, uh, we, we definitely um, are giving a thumbs up to... Uh, to the leadership uh, so far. But there is a very crisp flag that is going to come up uh, in the near future, and that's NHI, <laughs> National Health Insurance. And if it is seen to undermine the excellence of private sector uh, medical uh, delivery, very bad flag, because it could lead to another exodus, exodus of talent from this country, and that's the last thing you need at this uh, moment in time. If, on the other hand, NHI is seen as a way of combining the strengths of the public sector with the private sector to create a better health system for everybody, very positive flag. Now, I haven't a clue what's going to be in the draft. All I'm saying to you is it's a very nice way of seeing whether we're going to create, in practical terms, an inclusive uh, society where the, the interests of the minority uh, and the majorities are carefully balanced with one another so that we actually keep that kind of inclusive uh, uh, feeling uh, in our country. The second flag is correcting the, the problems that took us down those 13 places in uh, 2007. And uh, we think the, the most important aspect of the flag is pockets of excellence. This country has enormous pockets of excellence. And if we use those pockets of excellence to raise the performance of our game elsewhere, good flag. If we dumb down those pockets of excellence, bad flag. Let me give you an example. People moan about service delivery in government, but there's one world-class government department, SARS. <laughs> the South African Revenue Service is as good as any revenue collection agency in America or Europe. 
and indeed it's more internet savvy uh, than, uh, than those agencies.